All right, what's up, guys? Nice. We're back. We're back. Welcome for those who are not here. My name is Anurag Das, and I'm here with Jarvis Yu, the Gold Pro Mass Drop East um, guy, dude. I don't know. You'll notice that today he's not wearing uh, <laughs> the same shirt. I'm kidding, Jarvis. How are you doing? Good job on uh, beating beating Michael Bondé in four games. That was very impressive. Um I absolutely loved your deck selection in Grixis, Delver, and uh, Fuchin. How do you feel about that? Uh, I just wanted decks that were good versus X1s, and, well, Mike chose different decks that had X1s. But, uh, All right. Apparently we have some matches ready soon, looks like. Although, okay, this maybe looks... we'll take a look at a deck list real quick. Let's see what we can find. It seems like what we'll have now is... Mac Doyle playing mono red sneak attack versus Caleb Durward on not so Ooh. miracle. So let's let's take a look at Mac's list first. Jarvis, tell me about this deck list uh, and uh, you know what am I expecting going into this game? So this deck, I believe, is a Jeff Hoogland special. It's really big red. Uh, it has four sneak attacks and four through the breaches and a lot of big creatures to put in. Three Gristlebrand, two Godo, Bandit Warlord. Godo uh, is spicy. You might have to read that one, but basically what it does is it searches up an equipment and puts it into play. Uh, it has Inferno Titan, Emrakul, and World Spine Worm. A bunch of mana, Blood Moons, and Chalice of the Void. Interesting. So I guess it looks like from the deck list that max choice for uh, equipment is going to be two copies of Batter Skull. And I, I actually really like that because looking at his mana base, it's very it's very reasonable that he can uh, hard cast you know batter skull on turn three or four in case he you know happens to draw it. Uh, I've been informed by chat that Hoogland did not invent it. I meant that he that Hoogland popularized it by playing it a bunch on stream, not that yeah. he was in. For for a long time, I always associated Hoogland with Big Red. Though recently, he has been branching out to new decks on a stream, so yeah. that's pretty exciting. Um, it also looks like this deck is uh, a Chalice of the Void Blood Moon deck, so it's really looking to sort of gimp the opponent by, uh, you know, playing an early turn one, turn two, uh, uh, block piece. Right. And um, outside of that, the rest of the combo seems, you know, pretty bent on just, you know, Turn two, maybe a Simeon Spirit Guide, Seething Song, Sneak Attack into like a World Spine Worm or a big creature. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, looking at a sideboard, um, or actually, you know, let's, let's look at Caleb's list now. And uh, here's where, oh. here's where, <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I might know a little bit about this deck. Um, <laughs> rest in peace, Sensei's Divining Top. But in its place, we have some other d demonic monster that now features. Um, what set did Porton come out of, Jarvis? You, this is something you would know. Ice Age. Ice Age. Nice, nice. So this is uh, like your typical uh, blue-white control deck with a flurry of cantrips, counter spells. Um, still leverages Terminus as one of the best you know removal spells in in the format. And then looking at Caleb's list, he's got the same four Snapcaster, two Vendillion Click, and Entreat the Angels to close the game out. Interesting thing about Caleb's deck is he has four Terminus, three Plow, and four Counterspell. To make room for all this, he shaved a Predict and a Portent. Yep. And also, notably, Caleb is opting not to play Monastery Mentor in the main deck, and that's where you'll see some of the lists take, uh, like, diverge, whether it's, like, you know, two colors or three colors or win condition of choice or even, like, the number of cantrips and uh, blue spells that you mentioned. It also notably is not incorporating Vulcan Red. I think it's kind of an interesting decision. Mm -hmm. So, so Jarvis, tell me, how do you expect this matchup to pan out? Who do you think is going to win the first game? Ooh, um, pretty close in game one. I think it's somewhat draw dependent. But I think okay. there's a slight edge to blue white. Slight edge to blue white. Now, what's interesting is that we didn't see in Caleb's list any copies of Unexpectedly Absent. So, if a yeah. Chalice of the Void does hit the table, I don't believe there will be a way to get rid of it. Nope. Also, no Council of Judgment or Engineer Explosives, which are ways to kill a Chalice of the Void as Correct. well. And um, so, both players, I imagine, will keep seven. Well, actually, I, I if I am in uh, Caleb's seat, I I don't mind keeping this hand. It's a little bit action light. 
Um, but I could very reasonably see mulliganing to a cantrip to better react to what you see in the first few turns of the mat of the game. How do you yeah. feel about uh, Max Hand? So the minor issue with Max Hand is that he can only do one thing by pitching two spirit guides. Okay. Think for that. Uh, I mean, if you think Blood Moon's going to be really good, then you just jammed on turn one. But you don't have a backup plan besides that. I think is right. the minor issue. And so it looks like uh, Mac is going to keep his hand, and he's going to jam. Um, up. Blood Moon, yeah. Yep, that turn one Blood Moon. He's going to hope that it's going to be good enough against uh, whatever deck Caleb chooses to play. But plot twist, Basic Island is going to ruin this plan. There are two Basic Islands in Caleb's hand, actually. In fact, if you looked at Caleb's list real quick, it had five islands, two planes. Okay. So he might just be tempted to let this go. I mean, like, I don't know. Very interesting. Well, it looks like he's choosing to uh, counter it, uh, pitching Vendillion Click. Ooh, Brainstorm off the top is an excellent draw. I agree. It's going to be Ancestral Recall and given his hand, because he has so many lands. <laughs> I agree. I mean, give, give, given how poor, poor his hand is looking right now, Brainstorm is going to do a lot of good work here. I also do like that Caleb uh, elects to play the Flooded Strand, um, just in case there is follow-up like Blood Moon yeah. or something like that. He can respond to Kraken. And- find a, a planes. Also, but, uh, as chat points out, this Caracas is actually very good if it's just a breached Emrakul, because you can mm-hmm. just bounce it. Not the best versus uh, sneak attack, but, you know, it is yeah, that it seems, is. That seems like it's going to be a while away anyways, because at this point, I think that Caleb is stabilized. You know, Mac has missed his second land drop, hasn't drawn anything afterwards. Caleb is still sitting on that copy of Counterspell. Um, and, I mean, he's got the Caracas just in case uh, he needs some help. And it looks like both players will be joining back momentarily. Yeah, I think they had to reconnect Caleb real quick. Ooh, a Caleb... Can we can we all take a minute to appreciate uh, the Caleb D beard, please? Can I get some woolu woolus in the chat? That's a gor- gorgeous beard. I love oh, it. It's back. All right. Well, well, yep. But Caleb's hand is very good now, given uh, what happened before. Right. And you know, honestly, at this point, I don't even think you need to cast the brainstorm for. Um, right. Yeah. I mean. You've got enough to make do, and then it's potentially it's possible that you know he's going to draw some white cards like a terminus along the way that's just not going to do anything in his hand. So I actually just like sitting on the brainstorm now. Um, if he had drawn like a land instead of the counter spell, I would be more inclined to fire it off. Right. Yeah. But I'm I'm excited for this match. I think um, I don't know what's going to happen. There's still a lot of time because miracles gives its opponent a lot of time to develop. True, true. So, so tell me this then, of both sides of the table, what do you, what do you think both players want to be drawing into now? Uh, Mac wants you to draw mana sources like that. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> uh, the problem is he's still. Oh no, he can just hard cast Inferno Titan off the okay. second season song. Uh, that... Obviously, he's going to get counterspelled here. But this illustrates the power to a degree. I mean, yes, Inferno Titan is going to get countered now, but. The point is that Mac has like these really powerful haymakers at six mana. That is, it's yeah. reasonable for him to actually cast. Like, I mean, you know, next turn, let's say he draws another soul end, and then turn after he draws like something like Batter Skull, he's not completely out of the game. Right. If Mac draws a soul end, I think he's supposed to sandbag it because of the City of Traders drawback. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, th- and that drawback is that when another land comes into play, yeah, that- uh, you have to sacrifice the City of Traders. So, actually, if you're Caleb. What happens if you let it resolve, hoping to hit a Swords or a Terminus? Okay. Um, very Same. interesting. I mean, he didn't do that because it's kind of a maniacal play to do, because you have to hit one of your seven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it seems like he drew two lands afterwards, so I guess yeah. he's uh, slightly... Uh, do I want to say rewarded for not being um, too greedy with uh, his counterspell? Yep. Ooh, no. <laughs> the great town. Uh, very unlikely to work for the blue white deck. Right. Yeah, the blue white creature control deck to uh, to add to that. I mean, if you're in Caleb's seat right now, you must be feeling really, really ecstatic. That brainstorm is uh, very good as well. Yeah. 
Not only does it find a second counterspell, but it finds another copy of Snapcaster Mage and a fetch land to find a basic plane. So yeah. I was going to say, having another fetch, being able to get basic planes is a big deal here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Snap Brainstorm? I guess That's when you have so many Snapcasters in your hand that it's okay to use one like this. This yeah. is a tad bit aggressive, though, I think. I, I agree with you. I think it's a little bit aggressive, but I also wonder, you know, if you're in Caleb's seat, you're 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 wondering, okay, let's see. He's got two cards in his hand. He just cast a Simeon Spirit Guide, which means he's not even using the Spirit Guide for mana, which means he probably doesn't have anything relevant that he can cast. So it's okay maybe to... Actually, this was all in the end step, right? Yep. Uh, all right, it, so maybe... The end step, because I think he just wanted to get a clock going. Yeah. Is the reasoning there. Ooh, Chalice on one. Probably getting Snap Counterspelled. And the reason okay. to Snap Counterspell is to get another threat into play. Mm -hmm. And you already have two Counterspells behind it anyways, so... Yep. This is the advantage of the four Counterspell build, I think. Just gonna, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can actually just realistically Counterspell something like eight turns in a row with four Snapcasters and four Counterspells. That's it's actually kind of just disgusting. I think this is the kind of magic Aaron really likes to play, playing Wayne I mean, still. <laughs> this is the kind of magic I would definitely sponsor. <laughs> this is very Cuneo-esque, actually. Yeah, and, and we see here uh, Mac is going to take the trade one spirit guide for the other because uh, somehow this combo deck has suddenly become, I guess, he, the, the control deck is now like yeah. aggressing or being the aggressor or whatever proper word just however you're supposed to describe it. So taking the trade there is definitely correct. So have you seen Sandstone Needle before? I have, but I feel like you're going to tell me something about it that I don't know. Uh, it top aided a Grand Prix in 2005. Okay, I did not know that. That's pretty cool. It was what? actually, it was called Sneaky Go. So it had <laughs> Sneak Attack in it, and had Sarah Avatar and Blazing Troll. I'm assuming, that, I'm presuming this was not Legacy then. It was extended, which is a okay. extra precursor to Legacy in a lot of ways. In any case, uh, Caleb just drew a predict. Mm -hmm. This is one of the notable cards of um, Miracles, even the old Miracles deck. It's just basically Night's Whisper a lot of the time. Yep. All right. So and I think it's going to get counterspelled so fast here. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's pretty crazy, though. Like, uh, I feel like. Mac has been drawing pretty well, and this is the problem that you mentioned earlier with like this sort of blue-white miracles deck that it's killing very, very slowly. So, I mean, if Mac does have like runner, 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 he could possibly get an Emrakul into play and annihilate for six. So interestingly, Caleb knew that he had to crack his fetch before brainstorming to set up his predict mm -hmm. because it was his blue source. Okay. There's a lot of small things that go on with this deck. If you're not careful, you can mess it up and then get yourself into a spot where your predict doesn't work quite correctly. Yeah. Uh, he predicted naming Island that he brainstormed on top, drawing a force and a rainforest. I think this should be pretty good for Caleb as long as he finds... Well, he has three counter spells, so it's actually going to be hard for Mac to mount enough threats in a row to get through all of that before you just die to the Snapcaster, I think. Right, so I mean, Snapcaster represents a six-turn clock. Caleb's got half of those cards covered, and I mean, if and Mac it, is actually... Oh, go ahead. Uh, even the Through the Breach is covered by the Caracas, funnily enough. True, like, true. You don't even have to cast Counterspell. You can just activate the land that's on board, which is pretty sick. Right. I mean, this is well. I mean, Mac is drawing pretty well, though. So I, I, I I'm. Uh, yeah, he's not out yet. Uh, but I have to wonder how many more cards he actually has in his deck. I mean, like between. Oh, the sandstone. The sandstone needle is also depleted. Yeah. So now at this point, it's going to be very hard for Mac to to win. I imagine. Uh, he's got. Four more draw steps, maybe five. I can't. I can't really math well. Two plus two plus something plus something equals something. I don't know. Uh, it's a five turn clock currently, but if if Kill finds an entreat, a quick, 
or a second snapcaster, the math gets thrown thrown off. Right. And also, approximately half of Matt's deck is mana by this point. Mm -hmm. So he really needs to draw in the correct order as well, which is going to be a tall order. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it was uh, unfortunate. So Mac was Max opening seven was really just banking on the fact that um, Blood Moon would be an effective weapon. Also, it was just banking on the fact that that turn one piece would resolve. Neither of these were true, and Caleb was able to use that to snowball into this like this crazy advantage that he's got right now. So interestingly, I think Mac is going to go for the end of turn through the breach. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the thing that works because it's a sacrifice at the beginning of next end step. Yep. And we know that we can let the through the breach resolve, but Caleb does not know that, so he will probably still counterspell it. Uh, agreed. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, what could come into play, like a world spine worm or like a gristle brand? A Gristle Brand is still problematic because he gets to draw cards even though the Caracas will bounce it. No, he's at four. Oh, true, true, true. You're right. Oh, he can't he can't do that. Okay, so then what about Goto? Goto would be pretty uh, pretty cool if it came into play right now. Uh Goto would be a funny one because it grabs the virus goal and just puts it into play. Mm hmm And yeah, you see you just see Caleb counterspell the seething song. All right. Yep. Caleb's not here to mess around. So let's take a look at sideboard action now. Um, Jarvis, from Mac's perspective, what do you think Mac is going to bring in for this matchup? Uh, okay. I guess he just wants more threats. Okay. And he noticed that uh, Caleb was fetching for basics sort of aggressively, so he's taking out his blood mints, which is, I think is kind of interesting. I like and that. I like that. And Trinispheres as well. Or not. Ooh. Actually, taking a second look, it's, it looks like... Uh, Mac is keeping in two copies of Blood Moon, maybe going for that uh, aggressive cheese. Yeah. I think the problem with Mac's sideboard is there's not actually a lot of cards you want in this matchup. Like, you're sort of pre-boarded, I think. Mm hmm So do you think... Trin would you like Trinisphere better or Blood Moon? Um, so Trinisphere is actually pretty good for Snapcaster mm -hmm. as well. And if you think Caleb is just straight blue white, which the evidence sort of points to, I think Blood Moon might be worse than it normally is versus the three colors, three color blue white control decks like blue white red or Esper. Okay, yeah, I, I will say that Caleb did reveal a Misty Rainforest, and that is exclusively not a Scalding Tarn, which means, I mean, I would be more, I would either believe then that Caleb is not playing Basic Mountain and just has like two Volcanic Islands, right. or that he's on Blue White. Right. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, this deck is sort of pre-boarded, so there's not much to bring in. Uh, let's take a look at the other side. Um, Jarvis, how do you feel about sideboarding here? We've already seen Caleb bring some cards in, cut some cards, but you know, how do you feel like Caleb should be adapting? Uh, didn't completely get to see it, but it looked like he brought in the Containment Priest versus the Sneak Attack Slush through the Breach, which is definitely correct. Mm -hmm. And he brought in, it looked like Disenchant, but it was hard to tell for a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it was a copy of Disenchant, and I like the Disenchant against uh, lock pieces like the Chalice and the Blood Moon that we see in, uh, in, in Max Hand. And I also believe Caleb took out all the copies of Terminus, so he's probably just trying to go after stack base interaction um, right. rather than dealing with like a result Inferno Titan or uh, World Spine Worm as reliably. I mean, he still has his copies of Swords of Plasters, which is pretty good. Uh, so he's not like completely sacrificing everything. And looks like Mac is going to keep an amazing hand of uh, City of Traders, Chalice of the Void. I think that's exactly where you want to be in game one. Caleb, wow. on the other hand, smoking real aggressively. Right. I think he's afraid of Chalice. Like, he knows that that deck has four Chalice. Mm hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the seven card hand, it's not exactly good against uh, against the mono red deck, but, you know, like, it's something that I'm willing to mulligan. And uh, the six card hand, like, was just all one drop. So if you're afraid of, if you're afraid of, um, 
what Chalice of the Void, that six card hand is almost just as bad as a seven card hand. So So there's gonna be a lot of draw go for a while, I think. Yeah. Seems uh, like it. This favors Mac by quite a bit. Because mm-hmm. I think the weakness of the big red deck is that it doesn't get to play can- cantrips. Yeah. But you've effectively shut off t- every cantrip in the deck except predict. Right. And then and, you uh, find predict. Ooh, there's a sneak attack. And Kilo needs to draw basic planes this turn. And he actually needs to main phase the Containment Priest if he wants to do anything. Correct, because if he tries to uh, cast his Containment Priest in response to one sneak attack activation, Mac can use the rest of his mana to yeah, activate has, it again in response. He has so much mana that it, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, Caleb would need to have uh, about, what, five Containment Priests uh, to, to stop uh, the sneak attack? No, um, I think uh, Caleb's seen the writing on the wall with his five-card yeah. hand that could not defeat that hand. Right, and I mean, this was just a case of the mulligans. Uh, I wonder if Caleb's going to maybe reboard. Okay, um, so Caleb left. He brought in Mentor, two priests, Disenchant. Mm-hmm. Took out four Terminus. Okay. I think that's... Oh, he took out the Entreat as well for something else. I'm not sure what. But uh, I think that's a fine plan. Yep. I think you really just want to be on the, the, the Force of Will, the first play plan, and then just counterspell everything else that's relevant afterwards. So I thought about this for a bit. I think Flusterstorm is sort of interesting. Yep. Because you can Flusterstorm a Seething Song, or you can Flusterstorm through the Breach. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've had this conversation with myself many, many, many times. Uh, why I talk to myself, that's that's something for a later topic. But yeah, Flusterstorm does have its application. It's just like, the problem with Flusterstorm is that it can be so bad against like the other half of the deck, which is like Chalice and Blood Moon. Um, and so it may be worth it to consider something else. Um, so Caleb is going to aggressively fetch the island. I think he's going to play the Needle Naming Sneak Attack. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't have to worry about that, that axis. Right. Uh, and Interestingly enough, Max Matt kept a seven because he's got that turn one chalice, but he's drawn four copies of Seething Song, which is <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Uh, uh, five, seven, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, minus 14. one. He can he can make twelve mana next turn. True. Yeah. Five, seven, nine. And so if he draws like two Inferno Titans off the top, we've got a game. I mean that that's it. That is a lot of mana. Uh, Caleb has drawn Disenchant, which is pretty good. He can go after the Chalice if he wants to. Right, right. But instead, Not he's going to like to keep up the. Yeah, this turn he's going to play the counter, uh, keep up counterspell mana instead, which I do like. Uh, we're not exactly in a rush because, well, we're we're pretty reactive. We're the slow deck. We don't we don't even have a one drop that we can cast into this Chalice of the Void, anyways. Yeah, kind of wonder if he's who who he's going to click here. So I think that's a pretty interesting decision. And he goes after Max hand. And yep. if I'm Caleb, I don't take anything here. His hand I, is literally seven mana sources. Yep, I don't think I take anything either. Uh, the reason I'm, t- I'm okay with targeting Mac instead of myself, uh, my hand as Caleb is just really good. We've got the Snapcaster that I want to use on the Counterspell yeah. later on, or the, even the Disenchant. Obviously, Counterspell, Disenchant are very good. And and the Jace was the only suspect card, but now we drew a Force of Will, which we can pace, pitch the Jace to. So we might already be in that just, you know, sit back, recline, yeah. and, and do nothing. I think if I'm Caleb, I would actually rather pitch um, Snapcaster Mage. Okay. And then maybe, like, play the Jace and start Fate Sealing or something? Yeah, or just... Brainstorm every turn. I don't know. I think once you have Jason play, it's pretty easy to win. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mac is going to go ahead and cast this uh, Simeon Spirit Guide. Get get those beats in while he can. He disenchanted the Chalice because he knew Mac's hand is literally just all mana sources. Because the mountain right. mountain was top decked. One interesting decision that I, I think is relevant here is that Caleb chose to play the Vendillion Click instead of the Disenchant first. Yep. Uh, do you have any insight on why Caleb may have done that? Disenchant instead of 
Well, he, he played the Vendillion click first, the turn before, when he had oh, open mana to do both. Just to get the clonk on. And okay. That's, 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 um, I mean, it attacks for three per turn. It's really fast. It was, I'm curious how much mana Mac has. Five, seven, nine, <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14. He draws Emrakul. He's one short of hard casting it. That would be pretty grand. Although, I mean, I, I, I respect <laughs> Caleb perfect. enough to realize to sniff out the Emrakul when it's coming, you know? Like, he's, he's turbo feet ceiling now. Okay. Which, uh, definitely a good play. Godo! You just let the Godo resolve, I think. Really? You do that? I'm wondering if you do. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, between Jace, you have two counter spells in your hand. I'm almost okay just countering the Godo and being done with it. You don't have Terminus either, but I guess you could Snapcaster, Disenchant, the Batter Skull, uh, and then Swords to Plowshares, the Godo. But so interestingly, then, I think uh, Max plan is if that resolved was to equip Simeon Spirit Guide with Batter Skull. Mm, okay. That's a so pretty funny because plan. he has a red floating, he could just cast Seething Song to equip Batter Skull to Simeon Spirit Guide. Simeon Spirit Guide, uh, causing all sorts of problems. Uh, Caleb, Caleb was having none of that. Yeah. Oh, and, and honestly, I do. I would rather probably just Force of Will the Godo because then you just uh, you're almost way too far. Like you just get caught up like a uh, tempo wise. You have to like main phase the Snapcaster Disenchant to play around Batter Skull bouncing itself back, and then something else could come off the top. And like I don't know, it's just like a headache to think about. Well, our Jace would be dead if he let the Godo resolved. Yeah, that too. Yep, this is going very well for Caleb. Mac is dead in two hits, and one of his lands is Ancient Tomb. <laughs> yeah. And off the brainstorm, he finds a copy of Caracas, which is... that It, it does double duty. It protects your click and bounces any legends that may come from your opponent. Right, and I mean, if if Caleb so chooses to do so, if Caleb chooses to do so, he can also bounce his click and then like draw step, do a little bit of uh, disruptive filtering uh, as insurance. I, I don't think Caleb will do that. Right, I mean, he could just hold up counter magic other way. Either way, yeah. The game has ended. Unfortunately, uh, one red sneak attack. I don't think he's going to take it. Pretty interesting that uh, the way Mac played the deck, I think, is much better than the way we've seen it played, which is just always jam. Mm -hmm. The deck is sort of just designed to just jam as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that was pretty exciting, uh, that game. Uh, I think it played out sort of how we expected it would go. One game we have... Uh, well, I mean, it was completely dictated around the card Chalice of the Void. Yep. Uh, the one game where Chalice of the Void did hit the table, you know, Caleb couldn't do anything. And then the other game, Caleb had insurance against Chalice of the Void early on. And uh, the amount of resources that Mac had to commit uh, to... Well, I... The, the the way the deck is built, it has so much invested in, you know, powering out that turn one uh, big spell that just simple counter spells were able to, um, w w they were enough to sort of ca uh, control Max Hand. Yep. All right, so we're, we're starting our second match. It will still be me and Anurag for this match. Perfect. And uh, this one looks like, it looks like uh, Caleb is, uh, sorry, uh, ooh, wait. Did, did Caleb switch decks? No. Okay, no spoilerinos, and we are going to run a commercial real quick. We'll be back in a sec. Yep.
Okay, are we back? Seems like we're back. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Uh, all right, so it looks like we're back. It, it seems like Mac is taking off the shackles. This is... Um, We've got we've got the lovely old death and taxes here. I think this is probably Max like finest deck, you know, like his uh, Swiss Army, his like the whatever you get what I'm saying. This is his like ultimate weapon in my eyes. This is what he actually top aided uh, Eternal Weekend yep. last year, I believe, with. So I'm going to be excited to see some high level play. Jarvis, give me a quick rundown of this deck. Uh, how does it work? What does it do? So uh, this is a mono white essentially sort of a prison esque deck. It has a bunch of taxing creatures like Thalia uh, alongside Wasteland and Rashadon Port. It also has disruptive creatures like Phyrexian Revoker, Mother of Runes, and Sanctum Prioate. We haven't it, that card is off and on played, but Mac has gone for the three recruiter of the guard build, which means A, he can tutor up any of his disruptive guys, and B, he can build a very slow squadron hawk with Fl Flicker Wisp. Mm -hmm. The you recruiter for Flicker Wisp. Cast Flicker Wisp or Violet in, target your recruiter, have it come back in at the Flicker Wisp. And all these three run flyers are going to very quickly kill your opponent if you have the game locked up at all. Gotcha. So, one thing I have to ask you though, Jarvis, is with all these creatures, I mean, these are some pretty expensively costed creatures. Flicker Wisp is like, you know, three mana. So is Recruiter of the Guard, Sanctum Prelate. Is there any way this deck can actually keep up with the lean efficiency of Legacy? Yeah, Aether Vial is its most powerful uh, weapon, I think, on turn one. It, okay. That card is ridiculous on turn one, and especially in a deck that curves from one to three. It just generates so much mana. It um, makes all of your creatures have flash, and they're essentially uncounterable. It does it all for this deck. Yeah, that, that is pretty insane. Having Being able to like flash in, flicker wisp on the end of turn, target a batter skull, get the token again, and then you suddenly have seven power, all yeah, for yeah. like zero mana. Um, Anyways, uh, we're going down to the match. Pierce, Caleb has won the die roll, and I do not believe he would mulligan this hand. Important sorts of plowshares, two lands, counterspell, snapcaster, enforceable. I think this hand is phenomenal, and I would not mulligan this in almost in the dark in any situation. So, uh, Do Mac Doyle mulligan this hand. I didn't get a good luck at it, but didn't look great. This yeah. hand, I think, is fine. Uh, it doesn't have to turn on vial, but he knows he has the cavern versus Caleb, mm -hmm. which is pretty potent. Right. Um, and interestingly, you can use Cavern Name Elemental. Use a Flicker Wisp to flick your Cavern to play something else that's uncounterable. That's yeah, that's actually pretty powerful. If uh, so, if you guys remember, Caleb d does not have any artifact or enchantment removal spells in his main deck. So if an Aether Vial does get on the table at any point, it's going to stick, and it's that's going to be extremely powerful. <laughs> Ca yeah, Caleb's going to lead with a Portent. Um, <laughs> He, oh, he shuffled it, but you saw what he portended it into, right? Yeah, it was two I Terminus and a... Terminus. Yeah, and Terminus, uh, not exactly where you want to be at this point in the game. Uh, he would be drawing the Terminus on his upkeep, uh, not being able to cast... Sorry, in his draw step, and not be able to cast it, so... I think he might regret that verse basic planes. But, yeah. I... <laughs> uh, he obviously doesn't know that. He's going blind, but you have to cast Port in there, I think, to develop your mana. Uh, I think so, too. You definitely want to hit that third land drop. It's extremely important. Uh, it, sorry, had no, no pun intended, but there's the pun there. Um, so let's, let's see. So this on, on Caleb, sorry, on Max's second turn, he's going to play Cavern of Souls. I guess he's going to name the uh, Core or Artificer. Yeah. It's better to name Core. Although it, it doesn't matter. There, that's the only Core that's in this deck. Unless if you're playing Core Sky Fisher. Oh, true, true. Which is not like it's not unreasonable to play that card. I think mm -hmm. uh, Caleb did not find any lands. He found a terminus and a brainstorm and a predict. Right. So uh, here's the issue, though. Well, what do you do here if you're Caleb? Um. Well, I'm really, 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 really inclined to find a third land for yeah. my third turn. So I, I definitely want to put two of my worst cards away, shuffle, and then cast a brainstorm. 
not on end step, but uh, on my draw step. And because we have the brainstorm, it's okay to keep a copy of Terminus. Um, yeah. We can effectively you know, reset it and manipulate it how we see fit. The issue is um, how we fetch and, and uh, what cards we put back. So, so he put back Force and Jace. And okay. he's almost certainly going to crack the fetch land. If I had to guess, he's going to get Tundra and Swords the Stoneforge. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's where I'm saying that some of the risk comes uh, into play because yeah. Mac has two copies of Wasteland. Wasteland Ooh. is very good when your opponent only has one non, uh, sorry, one basic land, um, and no other lands. So Mac searched up Sword of Fire and Ice. Okay, I like that a lot. Uh, I think Sword of the Fire Sword of Fire and Ice is uh, the premier equipment against this blue white control deck. It turns off Snapcaster from blocking and Jace from bouncing, so you exclusively have to use spells to like Terminus and Sword of to remove creatures. Uh, eventually, you can stress them enough where uh, so one uh, hit will go through. Yeah, Caleb drew what is trend for the turn, which is avoiding the nightmare scenario of not having uh, another land. Yep. Mac and, Wastelands, I think. Are we going for Brainstorm Predict in response? I kind of like that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. The issue is, what do you what do you predict away? Probably... Hmm. It's kind of tricky. This so is what, awkward. He's not going to have any white mana. So my yeah. instinct tells me to predict away a Terminus. Yep. I, I think I agree with you here. I would probably put both Terminus back um, I, and, and hold up Counterspell for any non-core creature that yep. uh, Mac plays. And then assuming that that's the... I mean, it seems... it's That's like the, the average case scenario where Mac has a creature. Um, oh, but that's interesting. So Caleb is not going to Counterspell this. No, I think he wants to Counterspell the Sword of Fire and Ice instead. Okay, all right. And so if we, uh, I guess if we find a brainstorm, another white source, there's a white source, we can just terminus away an entire field. So that makes sense, yep. It, most people playing with Mother of Runes do not attack with it ever, so it's not actually a clock. What actually it says is protection from, um, give your creatures protection from source of plowshares. Mm, yeah, although I will say, um, I was watching, uh, uh, Michael Dirkso play in like the top four of like a eternal extravaganza. And he said to his opponent in this matchup, sometimes you just got to get frisky. And he uh, attacked with the mother of runes like three times. I, uh, I, I also often pretty, I often attack with mother of runes, but I think the damage you miss is pretty relevant. It's relevant, but it's also like, like taking risks. Like if Mac attacks here, he's just walking, you know, headfirst into the Snapcaster Major Brainstorm. So I feel like it's also the fact that yeah. Michael probably had like a sick read and was just like, you don't have it. Yeah. Uh, there's something to be said for body language in real life that you can't get here. Yep. And indeed, uh, Caleb is going to cast Snapcaster here, targeting Brainstorm. Because it puts the Terminus back on top of the deck, and also it sets a Predict for the turn after. Correct. So this is going to be a very, very powerful play. Hey, I mean, guys in the chat, if you ever have a problem in Legacy, just re sorry, just remember, you know, draw more cards. It'll solve everything. So not always, but sometimes. <laughs> somebody, somebody, please ban Jarvis. He's a uh, he's very clearly lying. Um, <laughs> but looks so like. How do you sequence his brainstorm? I definitely... Well, you know what? You don't even have to put the Terminus on top, but you would be missing out on a card to draw if you did. Um, but I would definitely consider... You, you put the Terminus back on top, draw it for turn, predict away at the end step or hold up Counterspell, develop your mana, and everything seems pretty pretty Gucci from there. Okay, um, so he did put the Terminus on top. I think the reason to do that is he's going to cast Predict this turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only other reason I could imagine for not putting predict, sorry, the terminus on top, you put it underneath, you draw whatever irrelevant card, and then you could t theoretically predict Mac and then trigger the terminus at instant speed on on his turn. But uh, the downside is you don't get to draw the second card from predict. Yeah. So 
ultimately, I, I think the the value is just strictly too good not to to, to pass up. Well, wow, Mac has drawn mostly lands after his reasonable start. So Caleb is going to project upkeep, naming whatever land he put on top. All right, real quick, what card was it, Jarvis? Scalding turn. Nice. Good job. Good job. Um, and yeah, I mean, in this situation, I think Mac is not looking too hot. If Caleb finds a Jace the Mind Sculptor, I dare say the game is over. And also, uh, Caleb has a lot of looks at this. If um, ooh, I think he just keeps those. The Snapcaster being the most uh, relevant of the three cards. Right. So if you're Caleb, you keep this, you draw the portent. It's not unreasonable that he shuffles. You're going to cast the portent. Do you target Mac? Oh, that's an interesting question. I think I would not. Okay. So we see here Caleb actually elects not to cast the portent. So he's going to save this cantrip. And I especially like that play. Um, I think it's okay to be conservative here. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a default you have uh, you're looking for you know removal spells for the creatures, so you know what you're going to be portenting for. But you already have Snapcaster Swords to Plowshares and another Snapcaster Mage for something else down the line, or even like a counter spell. So you're not like bent on casting. You're, you're basically not in a rush, is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. I think also, he's going to portent himself. Setting up Snapcaster Predict now. Yeah, exactly. And that's the other upside to saving the uh, the portent. And he can predict away that Rainforest if he wants to. And what's very interesting, it seems the way that he sequenced it is that if he's going to cast the, the Predict, he's going to get rid of Counterspell. Yep. I don't, how, do, how do you feel about that play? He, he's just going to cast the Click this, this turn, I think. Okay. Conveniently, uh, Mac draws Stoneforge Mystic, the perfect card for Caleb to uh, snap Counterspell. Yeah, snap Counterspell, or even Vendillion Click later along the lines. Yeah, I think that just eats up too much mana based on how this game's going to play out. Fair. And the problem is, you can't actually attack your opponent very effectively with Click if he doesn't want you to because of the Caracas. Yeah. Caracas is a pretty big problem. Yeah, Mac has drawn a ton of lands this game, um, and none of a lot of them have not been Rashad in port, which True. is so one of the ways to sort of alleviate flood. He 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 still has the wasteland, but it's going to be almost dead by this point, I think. Yeah, I mean equipment is also a good way to alleviate flood, um, but we saw the sword of fire and ice get countered. Yeah. Caleb correctly identified that was one of the ways that he could potentially lose, like a string mm -hmm. of like, creatures into the Sword of Fire Nice actually mattering. I mean, there are times where you can just counter spell all of their creatures, but it's not that easy. Right. So here we see the end step Vendillion click. Oh, no, sorry, draw step Vendillion click. Mac is going to reveal his hand. Caleb's going to see Wasteland, Flagstones, Mother of Runes. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't do anything either. Like, you, you don't even care. If that Mother of Runes arrives. Right. So now that you know that Mac has basically nothing going on, now do you maybe Snapcast your port and target Mac? Interesting. I would have Snapcast your predict during my upkeep because the Rainforest was still on top. Okay, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's also fine to just save the Snapcaster for Swords of Plowshares, which is what he's doing. Okay. I like this. So he's just basically trying to get complete yeah, he, creature control. He's blue white flash by this point. Just turning the corner now, as the kids say. Unfortunately, the quick is never going to get to attack. Ooh, another counter spell off the top is pretty good. Um, yeah. This is... It's only four per turn, because I think there's no way the quick doesn't get caracas Or... Okay. I'm wrong. Um... This is to turn clock now. Source of plowshares being the draw. I think if you're in uh, Caleb's position, you definitely counterspell the source of plowshares. Yeah, definitely now you do, because it, 
the clock is just so fast that not counterspelling it, I think, is terrible. Yeah, the clock is fast, and, well, Mac has no cards in hand, so... Yeah. I mean, this 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 effectively only ties up his. Ooh, ooh. okay. Now the game is actually over. <laughs> I don't know if there are any outs left in uh, Max deck. Oh no! Uh, Entreat the Angels being one of the most potent cards versus D and T, especially in game one. Yeah, and I do have a segment on Entreat the Angels. We can get back to that when we start the second game. But let's talk sideboarding first. Jarvis, tell me, how do you think Caleb's going to board going into this match, game two? So. Counter spells are kind of in an awkward spot versus this deck. The mm-hmm. reason being, Aether Vial and Cavern are really, really effective. So you, okay. will, you will see Caleb bring in the Disenchant, the Source of Plowshares, the Pithing Needle, and probably Monastery Mentor. Okay. Container so, Priest, I feel sort of two ways about, because the problem is often you have to sweep your own Priest versus them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it turns their Flicker Wisps into Flame Tongue Kavus. Don't forget that. Oh, true. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's sort of sort of a scary thing to do that. I would not recommend doing that most of the time. And I think you will see Caleb not bore them in. I think Caleb is going to just shave a bunch of counter spells. I don't know how many precisely. Whoa, he's taking out a Jace. He's taking out a Jace, and it looks like he's cutting Force of Will, too. That's very interesting. He's, um, he's taking three Forces. He's leaving one in. Uh, the best use of Force is to stop a turn one Aether Vial, I think. I think so, too. And and looking at, looking at you know, Max's side of the of the, the game, it looks like he's bringing in copies of Gideon, uh, Council Judgment, as Managing well Light. as... Vanishing Light, which is a Oblivion Ring, essentially. Right. And he's taking out two Swords to Plowshares. Okay, and it looks and like some copy of Phyrexian Revoker. Phyrexian. Yeah, two Revokers were taken out as well. Okay, perfect, perfect. So that's that's interesting. I mean, before you'd keep in Phyrexian Revoker, you just named Sensei's Divining Top or Jace the Mind Sculptor. But now, without Sensei's Divining Top, I could definitely see that Phyrexian Revoker, not as hot as it used to be in this particular <laughs> matchup. <laughs> Max opening hand <laughs> contains a three of a kind. Caracas. Wow. wow. <laughs> that is... Uh, I don't think he can keep that hand. Uh, I, and I have to agree with you here, but I mean, I, I am by no means a death and taxes master. So that, that hand, it has one mana source. Okay. It, it Our, one mana source <laughs> and two Lotus Petals. Yes, Lotus, Lotus Petals not that bad, but this six card hand that Mac has is phenomenally better. We're going to see a turn one Aether Vial resolve and go to work. Meanwhile, Caleb's hand has three cards that could be wastelanded and two Flutter Strands, a Ponder and Vendo Ink Book, mm-hmm. which I think is a keep, but it's not, you know, it's not in your top tier of hands. Yeah, I'm definitely not enamored by this. I mean, like, I hate Mole getting much like Bob, but sometimes you, you just you look at a hand and you're like, wow, I wish I could mulligan this. I mean, you can, but, you know, you're never going to. Ooh, and, and this is exactly why. <laughs> yeah, brainstorm off the top fixes everything. Brainstorm is an extremely powerful card. Ooh, it, needle is the perfect answer to the vial. Yeah, Pithy Needle definitely not what uh, Mac wants to see. Um, so Caleb's going to draw the Brainstorm in the Needle and shuffle away the other card. That's some that's some pretty good stuff. We're gonna see. Let's see. Uh, I mean, this hand. Rishon on upkeep. Yeah, definitely. Rishon on port on upkeep. We're gonna keep ticking up Aether Vial, uh, which means that Mother Runes is probably gonna come into play on Caleb's end step. Draw step is sort of weird because now Caleb can effectively cast a brainstorm. Okay. Yeah, and then play the flooded strand and fetch. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. A lot of cards Caleb is drawing that are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. This is the style of magic you love. Yeah, Draw just, the cards. 
Drago, do nothing. And, you know, I thought about this a lot after the top ban. Um, I'm okay with top going away. I'm okay with Terminus going away. I just want to play Predict, and I just want to draw cards. And I know that's, like, not... Like, that's, like, that's not a good approach to Magic, but... Oh, my gosh. Just drawing cards. There's something very... Very fun about it. Oh, apparently Mac accidentally clicked through upkeep for the Rashad and Port activation. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That makes more sense. Okay, so Pipping Needle predictably names 8th Prowl. There's a small amount of merit to naming uh, Rashad and Port, but I think naming Vile is much better because we'll get Mac's mana base right now. Not it is even not good. solve the cards in his hand. Which is uh, not where you want to be, right? Though if he does draw another white source, he could slam the Sanctum Prelate on on six, and he's going to be immune to Terminus. Uh, the Mother of Runes also helps against Source to Plowshares, so he's got some sort of like immunity to uh, removal spells, which means he can invest in his board a lot more. I mean, question for you: Is it better to name six than one for sure? Uh, the reason being, some of these lists often play Supreme Verdict, so you can't be certain that you lock out all of their sweepers with Preweight on 6. True, true. Uh, Supreme Verdict is definitely a consideration. I guess you could... Uh, that's kind of tough to say. Um, and the, the other thing about putting Preweight on 6, what if Caleb just cantrips a bunch to get around it? Like, just putting away all the terminuses and just overloading on enough relevant cards, like just like, like he could mentor Stompy by that point if you don't preload on one. Okay, yeah, I know that's definitely a consideration. I sure I'm sure Mac will be taking um, just to evaluate. I mean, given the context of his hand, I'm I'm kind of curious to see what he actually does end up naming. Also, with this Phyrexian Revoker on the stack right now, what would you name? Uh, and and why? Uh, if I'm Caleb, or uh, if I'm Mac, probably Jason Mind Sculptor. Jason Mind Sculptor. So they, they do they do say Jason's uh, better than all. Yeah, I think there's not actually that many good cards to Revoker in the matchup. Like Jace is the scariest one. Yep, I agree. Um, Occasionally, you'll see Engineer Explosives. Yeah, but I mean, this is since this is game two, we haven't had. I mean, Mac has not had the opportunity to see engineered explosives yet, um, and and that is probably a lot less relevant uh, than something like Jace in context of the blue white deck. You know that the blue white deck will almost always have Jace the Mind Sculptor, just because that's such a very powerful card in this matchup. Just really powerful things. Uh, explosives is also probably one of the most powerful cards against death and taxes being able to snipe you know multiple cmc cards uh sorry multiple cards with the same cmc also being able to play around thalia a little bit um so it's not an unreasonable name i would just wait until either um it's in play and you could like theoretically vial in the revoker to snipe it or at least wait to see it you know before no but um we're actually waiting for caleb he went to the restroom real quick but it, it, this is an interesting thing to figure out what you're supposed to do with the Revoker. Right, so Tybuck says uh, Phyrexian Revoker might try to name a fetch land, but I don't believe Phyrexian Revoker can name lands. Uh, you cannot name lands. Okay, true. So so I, I think Jace the Mind Sculptor is probably what we're going to see Mac, Mac name. Unless, like, uh, no, not even naming Batter Skull isn't even... like That's like, if I'm stretching, thinking about what I should be considering, even Batter Skull is just, like, too far, so... I don't think you should name Barriskull because A, you have Barriskull in your own deck, and B, you don't, you're not sure that... Uh, exactly, yeah. That, that Caleb even has it in his, uh, in his 75. All right. All right, so Revoker's going to resolve, and much to no one's surprise, it's going to name, drumroll, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Ah, good sh call shot. <laughs> it was not much of a call shot, <laughs> to be frank. <laughs> That's so awkward. Well, I hope Caleb had the Miracle buff on. Otherwise, mm -hmm. that pause indicates that he drew uh, a Miracle. 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I highly doubt he does. I don't think I have seen anyone ever use it, but also I am very lazy when I play online. I, I know one person who uses it, and it's Joe Spanier. Okay. Brilliant. I love it. I love it. Uh, so the MT Joe Miracle Bluff is you can just have it pause every time you hit your draw step, no matter what, or every time you draw a card, Sean, yeah. the first return. It is actually sort of a relevant thing it's just a lot of work because it, it messes up all of your other timings that you normally do when you play magic online yep uh so a second vial is one of the worst draws in the deck for mac i think <laughs> <laughs> but i think you still play i still think you tick up your vials um in 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 case you ever do draw like a flicker wisp or something like that or a council judgment or what have you all right, so if you're Caleb, what do you do here? I would slam Brainstorm, and I would slam Terminus, and draw some cards with Predict, and... Okay, so the thing about Terminus is if you put it as the top card, mm -hmm. you can just port your white source upkeep. Okay, fair point. Counterpoint. We have Predict in our hand as well, so we yeah, can... So if you put it below that, you mm -hmm. can just predict away the land on top, and then get around this. Correct. The question is, what is Caleb going to do? True. I mean, we see in his hand, he did find a copy of Jace the Mind Sculptor off this brainstorm. So I imagine we're really looking for that one-two punch of cast Terminus into Jace the Mind Sculptor into end the game. Yeah. I mean, you definitely want to cast Terminus this turn. Whoa. Wow. That oh, was going to predict here. Okay. And then Snapcaster brainstorm to set up the terminus later. I love this. You see, you see Caleb, Caleb is um, a man of good principle. Why kill creatures when you could just draw cards? He, oh, he understands. He didn't get forwarded again. Okay. So I would estimate Caleb's chances of winning this game at over. Over 70% by this point, I think. Okay, yeah. Considering I mean, he can still not cast spells. It's just like, sort of unbelievable <laughs> that it's been this long and he can't cast anything in his hand. True. I mean, I, I think Mac really was banking on the Aether Vial. Um, yeah. the, it did this, not get there. This needle has been Maelstrom Pulse for two cards, and it cost only one mana. Exactly. And this is going to be really good for Caleb. I definitely agree. Now, here's here's an interesting question. Do you think do you think you were supposed to fetch uh, for planes before um, putting back the the terminus? Nah. Okay. I think I would have put both terminuses back, but. Yeah, see, and so that's that's the reason I'm asking because if you put oh, both sure. terminuses back, you're you're obliged to fetch. To cast um, the 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 first terminus because the the planes is going to get ported in the upkeep, so therefore you fetch away the second terminus when really you want to just keep it on top of your deck. Uh, actually, this play is fine because now what's going to happen is we're going to miracle terminus, kill mm -hmm. both creatures, crack our fetch, then brainstorm turn terminus back on top of our deck with the jace. Right. Or that that is a play we could do. But it seems like the most likely play, uh, given what we've seen out of Caleb so far. Right, and I would be uh, particularly so, like, surprised. You spend, mana. you spend all four of your mana casting the greatest monster <laughs> in the history of the game. Can, can you? Yeah, you mean this guy, like right here in the back, just sitting. Yeah. He's, he's like this. <laughs> What's that? You want to draw cards? I got you. Thumbs and knows how to draw cards. <laughs> oh man, this is this is going to be a brutal game. I think it's basically nearly over. Yeah. Uh, um, Aaron Aaron does correctly point out that this was risky by Caleb because if uh, Mac drew White Source, he could have prelated. Yeah. Six and had Mother of Runes protection. Mm -hmm. Which means it's actually pretty hard for Caleb to get the creatures off the table. 
You would he would need two sorts of pushers then. True. I, I guess basically what's going on, Mac just needs to find a second white source. And uh, this is interesting. Like, if you want to analyze Death and Taxes, the deck, you, used to, you say, like, mono white. Oh, okay. Then its mana must be very crisp and clean. It must be able to just cast all its spells there, all the time. There's actually a history of magic or a history of legacy of monocolored decks having some of the worst mana bases. Merfolk being one of them. <laughs> you used to have, like, Wastelands, Mutavaults, and, like, 12 islands for a bunch of blue-blue cards. Yeah, I mean, and, and like you see, like you're, you're playing four copies of Port, three copies of Caracas, all yeah. of these wastelands, and suddenly you're just like, well, I only have like, yeah. I don't know, like eight actual basic white sources. Yeah. And Caracas is fine for casting it in spells. Let's, let's sure, get sure. It, it's the second Caracas that's bad, as you could see by his first hand of <laughs> Three and Thalia. Oh my god. I wonder if the, if he had kept that hand where we would be. Like, do you think he would have found more lands? Because honestly, like Thalia Caracas is one of the biggest problems for the blue white deck. Except I mean, he can't he can't cast that while leaving leaving a Caracas up because of his hand's three Caracases. What mm -hmm. happens? Turn one you say go. Turn two you float a white, play a second Caracas. And then turn three, you can play another Caracas and kill your, your previous Caracas. Yeah, I'm just thinking about like the clown music in my head right now. It's going like da 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 da. Yeah, yeah this this game is basically over. <laughs> right. So basically, we want to see how Caleb chooses to close this game. He's looking for two cards, I imagine now, uh, particularly yep. or Monastery Mentor. Yep, those are the two cards that will uh, end the game the quickest. And in the meantime, any extra removal spells that he picks up along the way um, with the uh, chase, snapcaster, brainstorm, predict, whatever, is going to be very good. Oh, there's the mentor. He's going to wait one turn to deploy it to have counterspell backup for a removal spell. Yep, because I like that. Because he knows Mac has had two cards stuck in his hand forever. And we know that they're uncastable cards, but Caleb is just being cautious because it costs him very little to do so. Correct. And in a power play fashion, Mac is going to deploy not the first, second, but the third Aether Vial just to send a message. And also we can just EOT quick to make sure that it, the coast is clear. Correct. And I would be very surprised if Caleb takes any of these cards, considering they're uncastable. Yeah, I mean, I so I don't know if you were able to... I mean, for people in the chat, I know Jarvis probably knows, um, after MKM Frankfurt, Death and Taxes actually had a pretty... Um, I, I wouldn't be exact, exactly like ecstatic about its win percentage. Um, it was like some 40% win rate over everybody who played it, and I think that was like the lowest of all the decks out there. Um, yep. I will note, though, that one thing I'm excited about is that we've seen a lot of players like... You know, Mark Koenig and then Thomas N. Voltsen, they've been playing these newer lists um, with, like, special special cards. And we're going to see here, Caleb wins the match. Monastery Mentor going to be an, enough to show that uh, the game is effectively over. But uh, going back to what I was saying, we've seen we've seen these, like, newer builds of Death and Taxes pop up. So the first one is, like, with Ancient Tomb... Um, you know, being able to go... It's just like Accelerate by a turn. You, you play more three drops, more powerful spells. And then the second the second version is what I believe to be like a, a Jun Death and Taxes. Jarvis, do you know anything about this? You mean Mardu. Mardu, sorry. My bad. Uh, yes, I do. But uh, let's just make one quick note and switch commentators. You should note that the Grand Prix was won by stock Death and Taxes. Okay. Virtually right. stock. Okay. Very, very nice. Okay, well, I'm going to tag out uh, Jarvis. I'm also tagging out. All right, so it's it looks like we'll have... Rudy and uh, Sean, I think. All right, Rudy and Sean. Ooh, I like this. This is like yeah. the dark side versus the light side, respectively, <laughs> in that order. Um, but very good. All right, um, good luck to both players. We'll see you guys soon.
All right, so we're going to be doing our second raffle. Um, so this one's for 10 tickets of bot credit with the card hoarder bot chain on Magic Online. Uh, if you want to participate, type dollar sign card hoarder in the chat. And in about a minute, I will select a winner. Well, MTG bot will select a winner on my behalf. Should I get rid of the Twitch, or I can get rid of the, I'll just disable this, I got my, okay, hey everyone, uh, looks like we're about to start round three of this showdown between Mac Doyle and uh, Caleb Durward, our defending champion from the Legacy Premier League, I'm Sean Yu. Hi, I'm Louis, I'm from France. All right, awesome. And it looks like we got some sweet magic coming ahead. My understanding is that uh, Caleb has to run back his uh, Miracles deck, and Mac has the choice. Uh, he has one choice, his third deck, because he's down 0-2 right now. So uh, while we're waiting... Okay, it looks like uh, this is Mac's deck, and it is a blue-white-red control version. It is a landstill deck. Uh, with uh, the Crucible of Worlds, so this seems like it's pretty powerful against Miracles. I'm and surprised the, he didn't... There's a lot of spice in there with the Canning Wishes as well. Yeah, looks like uh, our producer that. nicely highlighted these in green. What do you think, uh, Lewis? Uh, I actually played a Miracles Canning Wish deck before Top was banned, uh, mm -hmm. like a few months ago, and I gave the list to Anorak, so maybe just collaborated with the guy, because that's very close to what I was running uh, for the sideboard, I like the Kozilex return, the Fact of Fiction, the Disenchant. So the idea is basically you have this very clunky card in your main deck uh, that gives you answers to everything. For example, something like a Chalice of the Void, game one, you might not have any answers to. Now you can answer it. I'm surprised he has Disenchant over Wear Tear, but that's just... So it's very slow and clunky, but it gives you options in basically every situation. And the default mode is just going to be getting Fact of Fiction if the game goes slow or just get a sweeper. So I'm not saying it was good, but I had a lot of fun playing it, and I had some spicy cards like Noxious Revivals and such in the sideboard. But I think the best things you get from this is the main deck surgical extraction, because a lot of deck game one are not used to be prepared to beat surgical extraction, like a storm deck has only one tendrils and no empty the warrens. And a lot of decks just only have one win condition, because this is not a card you usually see game one, and it's actually usually a bad card for game two and three that people bring it way too often. But in matchups 
such as lens or reanimator, which are going to be tough for this very slow removal spell heavy stand seal decks. This could be a very useful tool. And I hope I didn't put too much hype on the cunning wishes and they won't suck because I really like it. Yeah, I agree with your assessment. And Anorak interestingly streamed a deck uh, version of Miracles before Top got banned with Cunning Wishes. I didn't realize it was inspired by you. I also cool. know Joel Asset, who is very known for playing Miracles back in around 2012 or so. He was um, actually uh, trying out Cunning Wish uh, for some sweet cards. And we're going to cut down straight to the action yeah. at this point. Uh, looks like... Uh, looks like... I can't tell who's on the play Mac right now. He's on the play. Mac is on the play, and he has turned to stand steel with Mistress Factory, which is very powerful. Okay, looks like uh, Mac, yes. I'm surprised he didn't choose this as his deck number two, uh, given that I think this is actually pretty good against Miracles. I have uh, had discussion about the merits of land steel in Legacy against a lot of players, and I don't think it's particularly good, but I think it does beat Miracles, or at least old Miracles consistently, and I think... Uh, old Miracle, New Miracle is not having top actually suffers even more in the matchup. I don't know, because still has all the predicts and Snapcasters, so probably more card advantage. I mean, it could win the card advantage war over Stand Steel, so it's probably just going to be a long drawn out game. And from the starting hands, we see that um, the Land Steel player has a lot of dead cards already with the removal spells, so I, I'm thinking, I think it's going to be a long game either way. I, I, I can't know the matchup. Like, no one really knows blue, white, red, cunning, which stands still, right? But Oh, I'm supposed to be showing video on this call. Shoot, sorry. That's how you get a... Uh, yeah, let me get this. There we go. Hopefully, you guys could see me here. Uh, but, yeah. Um, so, interestingly, Mac decided to lead on basic planes. Uh, do you think this is just to, like... Uh, withhold some information or because I think that really reduces his flexibility over the next couple turns. I think either way, when you play the standstill, you don't want to show that you have Mistress Factory to go with it because you uh -huh. want it to resolve and then play the factory so they won't know that they have to counter it. So either way, he knows he's going to only need one blue line for turn two. Maybe he doesn't have counter spell in his deck. I don't know. Maybe also he just wants to just hide what he's playing because he's going to play a basically must counter threats next turn and that's not something you expect from turn one basic planes mm -hmm. all right so here's a draw so for mac let's say for example uh, caleb does not have force of will in his hand if he sees basic planes go the chances are quite low that he actually keeps a force of will on the ponder right yeah and he and he got suckered into that he kept up planes and i believe a terminus off of his ponder now this is looking like a disaster as standstill yeah. is going to hit the board so we'll probably force pitching ponder here um, I, I think that's reasonable. There's three oh, ways you could approach it. You could force it. Yeah. You could force a standstill. You could wait it out and try to break it at an inopportune for uh, Mac. Or you could decide the force will on a blue card is uh, fine. Uh, you'll let him draw three cards and don't give him any temple right away. I think forcing is right because yeah. if he had a way to make a lot of land drops, uh, I think you could afford to wait it out. But at this point, I think... Um, your hand looking so bad, uh, not having a lot of payoff cards to uh, once you do wait out the stand, so you kind of have to break it. And I think That's the banning of, of Sensei Stop made st Stand Steel a more interesting option because, like, if the Miracles player had a Sensei Stop in play, he could just make infinite land drops and just wait out the Stand Steel, and now they can't, so it just became a better card against control. Yeah. But that being said, uh, Mac also has a very mediocre hand right now, so. Yeah, Max Hand, uh, not particularly strong. Uh, I, I didn't see the list, but does he have, like, Snapcast images and what's his card advantage? So basically, it's Cunning Wish for Fact or Fiction or the Standstills? I think I saw three Snapcaster mages, but correct okay. me if I'm wrong. Because um, but does he have anything good to Snapcaster, though? Because Cunning Wish exiles itself and Standstill is not a spell. So I guess if, I guess if the Wish resolves, uh, Fact or Fiction could be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if... Very sweet. Mm -hmm. I've been guilty of that. So, a portent here from. Um, okay, so Caleb here we targeting himself. So, there's. Yes. No, okay, there's three JCs, but no Snapcasters. Uh, no, there, there are three Snapcasters for uh, Mac, along with oh. Karanos as I, a wing yeah. Uh In terms of instance or sorceries, it's flashback. Those are uh, four brainstorms. Three counterspell, four forces, four sorts of plasters, and unexpectedly absent. Any cunning wishes that get countered, and two supreme verdicts, which I don't think are going to be particularly relevant in this matchup. So basically, what's going on here? We know the game is going to go long. It's a control mirror. I just we're just trying to see which deck has 
the more the more the inevitability, the more card advantage. And yeah. uh, in terms of threats, yeah. So thanks to our spotter for going ahead, our producer for pulling up the deck list. We're going to cut right down to the action right now, as I believe uh, Mac just drew a counter spell, which is very good in this type of matchups. But Caleb also has a Vendelian click very strong in its own right. Yeah. All right, so Island here from Mac. It's going to animate the yeah. factory. I think that's pretty aggressive this early. Yeah, I would, I would plow this, this factory for sure. Gotcha. Thank you very much, Mike. So uh, this factory is rumbling for two. Looks like... Um, this is very aggressive because in a control mirror with cards like Factor Fiction and Snapcast Image, I think you really want to be hitting your land drops with counter spells, and you just get Stone Rain basically give it, making like the bad source of plowshares into a Stone Rain for one mana. So, I mean, now, you might have had it, but... Yeah. Now, Caleb elected to plow it before in combat before any damage went through. I think he could have gotten punished if uh, Mac fought off a standstill because he wouldn't be able to represent double blue. Do you think that there was some merit to just going ahead and taking the two damage from the factory instead of uh, plowing during combat? I think if Mac had standstill, he would have played it either way. So, Yeah, that's um, a good point. So I guess there was very low uh, risk if you assume that the sequencing implies he doesn't have standstill. Here's a Wasteland drawn from Mac. Um, That's good. Yeah, it's good. I think Mac's deck is slightly better in this matchup, but so far, I think Caleb has drawn a little bit better, and I think he's ahead right now. If the game goes long, the things like Wasteland and Plowshares on the factories are just going to basically even out, and they won't matter in the end, because anyone will have million lands. Like, mana denial is only efficient when you're pressuring the opponent. So mm -hmm. this Wasteland is not doing much. Well, actually, that Wasteland uh, prevents um, uh, prevents Caleb from being able to play Snapcaster. Oh, there's no Predict in his yard. Uh, right now, there are actually no instants uh, for him to slap, snap back other than Source of Plowshares. So uh, it's a bit awkward. Uh, eventually, a Snapcaster will do something, but not quite yet. Maybe he's going to play this Vendelian Click as, just as a cycling effect. Also, as an option to look at uh, Max Hand. We'll see what he elects to do, as I imagine he's going to deploy the Vendelian Click right here. I'm not sure Mac is going to let it resolve, though, because it can take the counter spell, so might as well counter it, right? I agree. Uh, I, I think you have to counter it. Yeah. I think if you have the read that Caleb is going to click himself, you might let it slide, just because the Swords of Plowshares now get some value out of your hand. But I think it's too risky to give up that information. I'm not even sure Caleb is going to click himself, though. Oh, he, he's, yeah. Look, I, a, I'm not sure either. It looks like, uh, yeah, he lets that resolve. No fight whatsoever. The click is going to target Mac, and Mac's going to swords in response. There's a factory in play, so the source of plowshares in hand is actually fine. You need to deal with those, so. Yeah. Well, I think Caleb would like to draw some lands, but the yeah. upside of playing against lands still is you have plenty of time to um, draw into stuff. Ooh, uh, that's an interesting one. Academy Ruins. So that's very, very long-term inevitability. He cannot die to decking. Oh, that that's amazing. Does Mac have a, any way to make a fourth different color of mana? Because that also even prevents Jace from uh, going live. Um, I I can I can't know. Maybe he has like a splash for Ancient Grudge, but I don't believe I saw it. I'd be surprised. Yeah, I didn't think I saw one either. Uh, so often you can maybe like splash black if you're going to play Surgical Expression. Exp Surgical extraction anyway, because it's kind of a free roll if you think it's necessary to set an engineer explosives on higher counts. So Snapcast up on the yeah. fine lands. I guess he shuffled here. Yeah, I guess uh, he's got a hope and Urborg lands into play. Ooh, here's a Crucible of Worlds. And going together with that Academy Ruins is quite good. Um, yes. I think the play here is just run out the Crucible without showing the Academy Ruins to get it Force of Weld, mm -hmm. and then just go, haha, play your Academia Rins and just get back the Crucible later. I think this yeah. is a mess counter. I mean, it's not even sure, but it's infinite land drops. Uh, you cannot go, like, you cannot play non-basics for the rest of the game. And you have an extra Jace, so, oh, he's pitching important. That's interesting. I agree. I think if you had the ability to close out the game quickly, you could afford to let the Crucible resolve, but uh, this Miracles deck right now, it's stuck on three lands. Snapcaster is not particularly imposing clock. And uh, furthermore, he... Um, doesn't have the ability to like trigger an entreater or draw a mentor on command the way he would used to be able to. 
Here's a counterbalance set on two, uh, x equals two with two colors paid. That's going to wipe out any Snapcaster mages, uh, and it's going to go pretty well with the Cadmi runes. Now, he's, he still hasn't shown the Cadmi runes, which I think is the correct decision. So I thought, yeah, I thought Caleb kept a line on top because he chose to pitch the portent, which probably meant he kept the fourth land for the JCs with his ponder. So now, did he shuffle? I am um, not sure about whether he shuffled or not. I apologize for uh, not having paid attention. Well, either way, now he's, it's a big deal. Now he's playing Jace. So even though uh, Mac can just crack the explosives and attack with the factory, uh, Jace is going to stick. And I think wisely, Caleb decided to play around the second factory by not brainstorming, because if he did brainstorm, uh, Mac would just crack the explosives, play second factory, pump the first Mishras to a 3-3 and just kill the Jace, which was, would just be too much of a blowout. Okay, so it looks like uh, the the Jace Fate Seal left Lewis's left Max card on top. Uh, interestingly, with this Academy Ruins, uh, the Jace Fate Seal is less effective, and if Mac needed to, he could always grab a um, another. Assuming he resolves a Crucible, he could always grab another Fetch Land, so he has uh, infinite if the, shuffles. If the game goes on this way, uh, Caleb is definitely winning because he has the Plow for the Factory, and Jace can just go up infinitely. And there's True. nothing right now with the engines that Mac has. He needs to draw something. Now, if uh, Mac makes an assessment that he's very favored in the super long game, even with Jace on his board, he could be patient, wait until he resolves a wasteland, have a wasteland to protect his factory uh, with the assumption that he's going to resolve Crucible at some point. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, because uh, Jace has just activated itself like three times. At, no, sorry, twice, but will be three or four times by the time he can set that line. So he has to draw a wasteland naturally, and then he has to lose a draw step by putting Crucible on top, and if he doesn't resolve, lose another draw step, and I don't think he's going to have time for that, so we'll see. There's a Crucible on... There's a Wasteland in his graveyard, so the Wasteland's already there. Okay. I get it. Here's a standstill. Um, do you just jam it? Yeah. Mm. Now, this is one of my favorite plays. Uh, like this might five. prompt Ambush Viper in response to the standstill. Yes. Uh, with no talking, targets. Targeting Predict, probably. I see a Predict. Is there not? Uh, no. I don't think there's a pretty good. I see two portents, a ponder, a sorts of plowsters, and a couple force of wheels that aren't going to have any targets. So to me, this looks like a desperation move, and it could work if Caleb has basically nothing, meaning that he can then activate factory and get three cards out of the potential removal spell. But if Caleb just goes ambush viper that can just trade for the factory and then it's chasing an empty board, it's just going to be winning the yeah, game. It's like, uh, he's going to go Ambush Viper mode, maybe even target the swords, because why not? That's the only yeah, thing sure. that you could potentially flash back this turn. And um, then he's just happy to let it resolve. And, and this is pretty cool for uh, Caleb, because you're now forcing Mac to draw another Mistress Factory to be able to win combat. And uh, with Jace giving Caleb a lot of time to filter his draws or disrupt Max. Um, I think he should just go up with the Jace. Right. Under a standstill, I'm tempted to do that uh, yeah. because There's basically at some only, point, only one card you care about, so just prevent yeah. him from drawing another factory. There's only two left in the deck. One cool play I like to make when I have Jace and my opponent has a Feshlin on top, and is uh, to just put whatever whatever I can on top, even if it's a good card, to make them crack their Feshlin. Yeah, no, that's a high level play. Uh, what's really frustrating on Magic Online is that when you crack your fetch land and search, you have no ability to see what the order of your deck was. So you don't know if you got leveled or not. And I will often just draw the first card naturally on Magic Online just because I have no way to get information about whether my opponent was trying to game me there. Uh, I think that's something they need to change because uh, that is a very uh, real part of interacting with Jace across the board that you don't get to um, that's very uh, interesting. appreciate online. I had never thought about that, about this aspect of the game being a lost online, but that's actually very interesting. Yeah, it's really annoying. Okay, so another Terminus uh, here. Um, looks like, well, so, that was probably Stealth with Brainstorm. Here's a Counterspell not being bottom because uh, Caleb correctly assesses that Mac has to beat the board and Counterspell is not going to help him do that. Even though top was banned, this basically feels like the same as before. You can do anything you want to try and beat Miracles, like playing wacky Standsteel Crucible decks just to the combined strength of all the cards that are in the deck, the Snapcasters and the JCs, that are just very clean, efficient, one-for-one -one answers, are basically going to be just 
disruptive and powerful enough to beat whatever you're trying to beat them with. Like, th there was just no good solution to beating Miracles prior to the bannings. And I haven't been following much about the new versions of Miracles. That seems obviously way worse. But this game seems to show to me that, ooh, Intrit is interesting. Why well, it does not play it. Oh, it yeah. does still. I so, think that was a trap. And uh, yeah. Caleb Wiley decided not to play. He's playing to win this game with Jace. A lot of things could go wrong yeah. if he gives Mac three more looks. He's expecting Supreme Verdict, probably. Because you're, you're playing as a control deck. You know they don't have Terminus, but they probably still have Sweepers. Mm -hmm. And here, we're, we, we haven't commented on the mode yet, but it's been just very horrendous the whole game. Yeah. Okay, uh, here's a Jace the Mind Sculptor of Max own. Is oh. that going to incentivize you to crack the standstill? Because, I mean, you don't want to crack the standstill when you're playing that so, deck, but at the same time... Uh, it's a bit difficult. I don't even know what's Max Plan. So Max Plan is probably drawing to a Cunning Wish to get a Power Blast and kill the Jace. And oh, yeah. I guess Mind Sculptor helps you dig into that. He knows he's not in a winning situation, but I think this helps him try to get out of this. What do you think of tapping that Academy Ruins to pay for this? I think well, uh, he, he could... Cannot the, you know, cannot play the Jace with the mana he got in his pool right now. Um... I'm not sure. Uh, what, 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 what would you want to do with the ruins? You can still do it on upkeep. I don't know. Yeah, well, so the question is, what can you do for four blue that you can't do with three blue? And it'd be Snapcaster, yeah. Counter Spell, which you don't even have. Yeah. Okay, okay, so okay, so, so this is going to be way more interesting as both players are going to take out a lot of their dead removal spells for more uh, counter mm -hmm. spells, basically. And the yeah. thing with the, the Canning Wish decks that I've been playing a lot of, is that they don't actually have a lot of cards to board in because they have this scanning wish plan, right? So they have a lot of one offs of cards you can get, which means that you actually, you're never signing in 10 cards because you always just keep the canning wishes in and keep some good cards in the sideboard. For example, Fact of Fiction would be a great sideboard card against Miracles, against Miracles, right? But he has yes. to keep it in the board just to be able to wish for it. So he's not going to make a lot of adjustments. Looks like Mac reached here for three power blasts and a surgical extraction. Okay. Um, I, I wonder if there's any merit to keeping one Power Blast in the sideboard. I would definitely keep a Power Blast because this turns your wishes into basically Vindicate for a Resolved Jace. Yeah. But at the oh. same time, I think you don't mind drawing them either. And you could always use your yeah. Cunning Wishes uh, to draw out other stuff. Um, it's, it's very it's, tricky, but I, I, <laughs> I might be one of the few persons who have played a lot of Cunning Wish Blue White Red Control these last years in Legacy. So I think I would definitely keep a Fire Blast. All right. Looks like uh, on Caleb's side of things, he's reaching for one Mentor, a Pithing Needle, a Disenchant, and a Flusterstorm. I, I actually quite like Flusterstorm in this matchup uh, on both sides. So I was thinking that the interesting decision from Caleb is that he only brought in one of his three Flusterstorm. Oh, he's changing it right now for a Potent. So I was surprised by that, but not too much, because the threats he saw are Jay's Demand Sculptor, Crucible of Worlds, Standsteals, and all these things do not get countered by Flusterstorm. So basically, Flusterstorm is only going to be able to counter a counter and to be just a tramp in the counter walls, but it's not actually going to be protecting him from actual threats. Yeah. And But I think you should probably still bring them in. So interestingly enough, he took out a Sword to Plowshares, two Sword to Plowshares for two Flusterstorm. And he cut all his Terminuses, which are definitely right. Yeah. Now, my question is... Uh, can you make room for the third Flusterstorm? Traditionally, against uh, Landstill, I would, as long as it's not too heavy on the mana now, I'd actually cut one of my lands. However, mm -hmm. uh, in post-top, you don't have the ability to manipulate as much. You may have a lot of games where you might just be counting on naturally drawing lands uh, when there's some standstill-related stalemate. Uh, so it could also be risky boarding out a 21st land. Looks like he's going to keep two Flusterstorms, keep two swords. I like keeping some number of swords and certainly getting rid of all the Terminuses. Yeah, so he, he kept the same answer as Mishra's Factory's answers, but he brought better ones. Instead of having four Swords to Plowshares, he has two Swords, one Disenchant, and one Pithing Needle that can just do other things that kill a Mishra's Factory, yeah. but they can also kill a Factory. And Needle is way better because it kills all Factories for just one mana. Interestingly enough, uh, Chap brings up that um, Mac has a copy of Decree of Justice in the sideboard. I'm yes. oh, sorry, in the, in, in the main deck now. 
uh, that's very good against uh, Miracles because it gets value while being really hard to interact with, and they t traditionally board out a lot of sweepers. I wonder if you don't just keep that in the sideboard as something that you could always wish because you don't want that in your hand early. But the late game, if your decrease ever, if your cutting wishes ever resolve, that's a very hard card to beat unless they have significant pressure. That's true. One the card I was using was Secure the Waste as my uh, cutting wish target. Who I am not familiar with that card. So uh, X and the white instant put X one one warrior tokens in play. It's pretty fun. spicy. Yeah, uh, it's an exactly. instant Jarvis. Can you not see what Gatherer and MTG bot have? Oh, thank you. I stand corrected. You do not want to wish for decree. It's a sorcery, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I would have thought about it. So not here, Caleb kept a, a hand that's very heavy on Mishra's factory answers, but he has a brainstorm, so he's fine. But if the brainstorm gets pyroblasted or flaster storm, his end suddenly becomes just very dull and reactive and could just lose to basically anything. And Doyle's hand is more solid because it already has a snapcaster, which is a built-in two for one. All right. So it looks like that needle, in fact, did yeah. name Mistress Factories. Uh, disenchant so other targets include standstill, which is not really what you want to do, but like can sometimes give you the right. Sometimes it's right to break a standstill with yeah. disenchant on their end step, for instance. There's also the crucible. Uh, yeah, there's a crucible, although I'm a little bit worried about its interaction with Academy Ruins. However, both being one of's, uh, you might have plenty of time to uh, deal around that. So, uh, I don't think Caleb has any answer to the Karanos in uh, Doyle's hand. Do you think that it would be right with already two answers to Mishra's Factory, two one-for-one -one answers, to maybe hold the needle for something like a Jace or, a or Academy of Ruins? I think it would have been. And the reason I think that is, like, you don't see a factory, you have plenty of time to wait on it. I think the only thing that would have been punishing is if Doyle went turn two uh, factory into standstill, and now you don't have the opportunity to deploy the needle. But I think it's only that exact sequence that really punishes you for waiting, because at right. some point you have the ability to have one mana open. This is getting exciting, because it looks like Keranos might resolve uh, with double force of will backup. Yes. Let's uh, on Mac brings something to a fifth land and step, then he goes Karanos, Caleb counters it, then Force of Will gets Flash of Storm, and then the second Force of Will actually gets the Karanos through. Yeah. Oh, uh, it looks like Doyle yeah. might be trying to like maybe pick a fight. He's going to deploy a Snapcaster Mage here. And I think uh, I rarely like going all in on this one card when you're pitching two Force of Wills, but I don't think Caleb can actually beat Karanos. Does he have any unexpectedly absence that... Uh, I think the plan becomes then maybe Monastery Mentor try to just force through it and win very fast, or maybe entry the Angels, but it's very unlikely. Yeah. So here I think he's just going to shuffle the Supreme Verdict and draw the Scalding Tom. Has Doyle seen any copies of Unexpectedly Absent from Caleb in the entire set of matches they've played so far? Oh, is it Unified Constructed? Unified? Uh, no. Uh, it's not, but like he's been he's played against Miracles twice as his third match against it. Oh, okay, okay. And so he's played unexpectedly, against Yeah. Absent would be the one answer he could have to Karanos other than maybe Council's Judgment. Yeah, so, uh, this, right? the, that information like helps me decide, okay, how hard am I going to go in on the Karanos? Am I willing to play the Karanos and pitch two blue cards and two Force of Wills? Alright, so here's another fetch. Still at the end of Caleb's turn four. So I imagine it's going to be Snapcaster Brainstorm. And I think that's probably going to get the counter spell out of the hand so he did oh, not no he's gonna move straight to his uh next turn holding up a double counter spell with snapcaster double force and uh, he's just going for the conservative line not willing to risk everything the thing yeah. is when are you going to so i guess his plan is just to tap out the opponent end step with a snapcaster brainstorm and then untap and just jam Karanos. i believe that's the line and uh, here from Caleb, he hits a predict, but awkwardly enough, uh, I guess he could put the card he doesn't want on top of his library and use the two islands yeah. to predict. But that's uh, going to be quite low, right? So he cannot predict end step, and he has to do it upkeep. And I think Mac would be very happy about that, because that taps two of his mana. You we'll could see. do it on Mac's end step if he puts the card he does not want second down. Well, it looks like uh, Caleb thinks he'll be using his mana here. Maybe a possible uh, dealing click at he this point. He couldn't do it because uh, he had to fetch. So then the top card changes. Yes, but 
he puts two cards back, draws for turn. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, that's that's what okay. I was referring to. Then he has to draw one of the bad cards, right? Correct. White. Um, those that ponder was very good. I did not see the third card, but there was a counter spell yeah. and a snapcaster, and I believe that third card was important. Uh, no, so yeah. a lot of gas there. Yeah. He keeps on top, and I think he's going to just ship back to Mac right here. Mac is going to. I think this waiting game is is getting better and better for Caleb, and I think Mac is just the more he waits, the less. Opportunity is going to have to resolve his Karanos. And the thing, I think I'm wary for him because of the Force of Wills. They're actually not going to be good if everyone has the mana to trade to trade counters and the Force of Will costs you two cards, he's just going to lose the card advantage game. So I think with two Force of Wills in your hand, you had to be aggressive here and just try to stick a threat while you could because it's only going to get worse for you because they're going to trade one for two for counter spells and fluster storms and such. I agree. Um, Caleb's deck and his hand particularly is better equipped to... <laughs> Grind out incremental advantages at instant speed. Uh, here, uh, Doyle's going to finally pull the trigger, play a Snapcaster Mage. This is going to meet a counter spell, and uh, Mac has ability to play that Power Blast, point it there, or he could play the counter spell, possibly I think, both. I think you should probably Power Blast because you're not going to have the opportunity to play it uh, if, to protect your Karanos because you're going to already, already be tapping five mana. Well, the merit of using Power Blast is you can use it as a Vindicate at a later point. Looks okay. like. Um, I think you should with that assessment. I'm not clear, sure that's correct, but that was certainly uh, the logic for going for that play. Oh, no, the, the, the reason... Yeah, okay, now uh, he could win the f battle over the Snapcaster Mage, but if he uses the Power Blast at this point, he's not going to get any value out of the Brainstorm, <coughs> the Snapcaster Mage uh, flashback. Plus you. So we're going to, we're going to see Karanos resolve, which is pretty exciting. Uh, depending on whether Mac decides to invest all his counters in it, which I think is all the right decision. It's only one force of will at this point. Yes. All right, so counter spell now is, on the stack. Is there a better use for your force of will than to get... First, you're going to counter an opposing force of will, so it's not even a two for one, and then you're just going to resolve a game-ending threat. I agree. Okay, here's another force of will. Now I think you certainly just yes. go all in. And I think this is probably game. Yeah, um, interestingly, with the way that Caleb has fetched and drawn his basics, even right now he doesn't have an opportunity to draw into uh, and treat the angels. Uh, Mentor uh, is an out, but like, he has, it's very hard to trigger it against Karanos. It's bolted well. by Karanos, and like, you can get it to a 5 out of a 6-6 six, six on your turn, but then in the opposing turn you just get killed by Karanos. Yes, you, and I don't think uh, Caleb's hand is equipped to make yeah. enough monk triggers before the Karanos deals with the... Uh, Intreat the uh, Angels is probably the card he's looking for, but he doesn't have double white, and he doesn't have backup to make it resolve. So Correct. And But we have to point out that Karanos probably became worse with the banning of Sensei's Divining Top, because it was a nice little combo, but yeah. still probably good enough. Here's a Jace Lightning Bolt. It's going to go upstairs at Caleb on the draw trigger. I would just uh, I, play the Jace. Um... I don't know. Like I kind of like having hard cast force of will or counter spell power blast pitch force of will back up because it's Karanos. Uh, you only care at this point about like something like a uh, council's judgment at this point, which I don't know if he even runs. Uh, Max can go ahead and point sure. the power blast at the Vendillion click. So here you could force of will very aggressive play would be force of will one of the two cards so you can stick a Jace or the conservative play would just be counter spell and just pass the turn with force of will and blue card up. I actually like the aggressive play here. He's I like getting... the aggressive play here too, now that um, Caleb's tapped out. And Jason Karanos is going to be very good because he's going to be able to bring some land on top and just draw an extra card. Correct. Which I think is more exciting than Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. and it looks like Mac is considering his options. So yeah, as you outlined, Counterspell uh, to win the stack war or Jace after slamming the Force of Will. When when both your options are this good, you're probably gonna win the game. I like I like both these lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's on camera, so maybe he's gonna go off for the sweeter line. Looks like he's gonna force. I imagine this means pitching counter spell as a. Uh, oh okay. Uh, so pitching the counter spell here, and uh, this is gonna win the stack battle. Uh, Caleb so can be pretty sure that 
Matt can be pretty sure Caleb doesn't have a another counter spell or so, another force will. Potentially mind break trap is the only thing that would even be on the radar. There's an interesting situation here. Usually, when your opponent only is looking for one card in his deck, you might want to fade seal with the Jace. But Caleb is looking for a white source and then a cancel judgment on unexpectedly absent. So it's not even worth fate sealing here since he has to draw so many different pieces. And let's say you see Flooded Strand. Do you put it on top or on bottom? Maybe he has the cancel judgment in hand and he needs a second white. So basically the fate seal is not going to have any value because you don't have a lot of information. So I like brainstorming here, especially with Karanos. Agree. Now the devotion count for Karanos is currently at four. That's interesting. Um, do you think, oh, Caleb, we know caught cut two swords but left a third in sorry his third and fourth copies in do you think that he's going to try to play around towards the plowshares try to stay off of devotion if at oh, all possible course. are you kidding there's no way he just activates the karanos true all right so here's an end step snapcaster mage i think there's no way because it's going to be very hard technically for his deck to do not because he does not want to do it and then if he thinks about it he will also not want to do it so yeah uh, it is not easy to go to Devotion 7, and I agree that is a bit of a liability. So now that Caleb's seeing Karanos, God of Storms, do you think anything changes? I'm trying to start. Flusterstone maybe gets more interesting because you see this big counter war happening over these game-winning threats, and that's what he's just bringing in. And other than that... And he's going to reach so for that third Flusterstone, take away the Disenchant. He's playing straight blue-white. Um... All the versions of Miracles would have had red in the sideboard, which makes Karanos a little bit more ridiculous when you have one mana counter spell for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not Vindicate, but still, the one mana counter spell is good. So I yeah. think here he's just pay paying the price of having the straight blue white deck and uh, being against a version that's playing blue white red. Question like, Yeah. How does Karanos interact with a humility on the board? Judges? I need a judge. I, I, I'm a judge, but. Oh, I, you are. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm very curious. Uh, I have no idea. Is that humility anywhere in the 75? Uh, I don't think so, but I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's like a way to beat Karanos. I mean, you can draw a lot of cards that beats Karanos, revoke existence, anything that exiles. Yeah. Good so, uh, Ponder here on turn one from Caleb sees a fetch land, a counter spell, and I didn't see the third card. It looks like it was a Tundra, so. So both hands are solid. I think uh, Caleb's hand could be suffering against Wasteland, which could be interesting. Yeah. And we'll see. I think uh, I like Max hand a little bit more right there with the two hard counters and a Cunning Wish. Which yeah, is I really like the Cunning Wish here because it lets him deploy at instant speed. Uh, however, Caleb does have Vendelian Click of his own. Indestructible 1-1, one, one, regardless of whether there are a Devotion is turned on, Jarvis, uh, and Pai Kitsune. 0.80% sure. Okay, well, that's that's greater than 50, so I'm going to work with that as assumption now. Caleb, electing a draw that Tundra, knows that the fourth land uh, may not be good in traditional matchups, but land still versus Miracles, here your land drops is pretty important. I don't uh -huh. I don't think anyone's going to make a move here. So I don't think Caleb is going to play his click, because, like, let's say he taps out Doyle with the click, then he untaps, but he has nothing to do with the momentum he gained from tapping him out, so I think you want to wait on the click. And I don't think you want to jump stand steel here into three open mana when you have no backup whatsoever. So no. I think we're just both gonna do nothing. Now let's uh, suppose Caleb goes Drago here, plays his fourth land. Does uh, Doyle? Oh, looks like Caleb is gonna go for the click. click. Uh, I, I I would be surprised, but okay. One, sure. two, three. Vendelian click here on the stack. Just gets Does... counted and nothing happens. But I mean, you could, you could, yeah. So Doyle would get very punished here if there were a Jace of the Mind Sculptor yes. to follow this up with. But mm -hmm. I, I think, um, what do you think is going through his mind? He, this is the correct play given the hands. I, I just wasn't sure what I would do in, if I were put to the test in the same situation. Um, looks like uh, Doyle his, missed his land drop. No, no, he did not. It was, it's his turn four, and he's just going to play for flan. So the producer okay. actually made a good point. Uh, even if it Jace resolved, it could have just been attacked with the factory, but it would have probably fate sealed though. Okay, okay. that's what he's trying to indicate. Thank you, so Mike. Here, yeah. Ten steel gets countered, and then the two counter spells trade, and Mac is losing the counter war. But he's still he's still in fine shape. Just Caleb is only left with two reactive one for one cards in his hand. Mm 
-hmm. And Mac is left with two threats and a cunning wish. So, uh, yeah. So uh, I think uh, Caleb is just desperately trying to draw a chase right there. Yeah. But Mac this is has not great against the, the factories. So mul no mulligans involved so far in this game. Um... I think we're really seeing the feeling the loss of counterbalance here for Miracles because it was a card that was a mess counter, a mess kill, basically a game winning card for just two mana in this kind of blue mirrors. All right. And okay, thank you, chat. Particularly White Seal looks like he has a pretty uh he's pretty confident about his response. Uh so Kyrnos, uh not a creature. All right, Wasteland here from Doyle. He's got five mana. He's gonna use one of that to cut Caleb down, especially as he is representing Force of Will. Um, Caleb's still... got one of these awkward predicts with no manipulation right now. Right. Do you? Uh, I, I think you wait. You're not under That's tremendous crazy. pressure quite yet, and you don't want to lose the blue. Ooh, that's a terrible draw. Here's another source of plowshares, and I think this is where K Doyle starts uh, pulling okay. ahead. Yeah, it's cutting wish on your opponent's end step. He doesn't even have hard cast force will available. You seeing uh, two counter spells being used. I guess Snapcaster would be a annoying card, but I don't know if, if Caleb has the deck list, and if he doesn't have, he might be frightened of what uh, Doyle could get and let it resolve. But I think if you have the deck list, you'd rather just let it resolve and then maybe counter the fact of fiction. So you get the fact of fiction out of the sideboards for the future cunning wishes. On the other hand, you get it in the yard for the future snapcasters. So, Ooh. well, decree of justice. That's a good one. Look at this this board and this hand from Doyle. It looks like a deck from 15 years ago. Yeah, we have back in like 2001 exactly era control. Of justice. I mean, Caleb's hand is also old school, so I guess the joy of legacy. Yeah. The funny thing is Predict wow. also played back in the day in 2001 or whatever, but not as much play as it sees these days in Legacy. So Flesh of Storm was an amazing draw from Caleb. Probably was... one of the best draws in his deck. Yep. And now it's going to just trade one for one with the uh, Factor Fiction and uh, means it's also not on the sideboard for Duo so... anymore. He basically traded 7 mana for 1 mana and uh, 1 for 1, so that's a good deal for Caleb. I still think right. he's far behind though, because the, the the fact of fiction in the yard makes the future snapcasters so much bigger threats. Mm -hmm. And hot counter is also good right there. What's the end game here for Mac? Are you going to cycle the decree fairly aggressively, make 3 soldiers, or are you going to sit on this for a while, see what happens, maybe ambush a Jace? Uh, I would just cycle it. Alright. I, I'm not giving <laughs> serious justification for that, but that's just what I feel is right. Wait, so the cycling cost was three, right? And then you could trigger. Cycle for three and then X. Okay. That's already plenty good, right? I mean, how yeah. much better can you get? Um, okay, and he fetched for a basic island, right? Uh, didn't he fetch for a second volcanic, though? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, but does not have double white anymore. Does not matter if you're trying to cycle Decree of Justice, but I wonder if that's going to bite him uh, if he does need more white sources later. Yeah, I don't right, know. So exactly. It's quite low on white. You probably cut the moat and probably even cut the source of yes. Ooh, and now a Keranos. This is looking uh, not good for Caleb. Fortunately, he is already up two games, as you can see from those two spherocoid sphere, spheres uh, indicating his 2-0 match lead. Um, and this, now uh, is in the un unviable position of losing two tokens or having to use one for one removal on them, and and he cited out his terminus. So I don't even see what Caleb's plan is right now. Maybe a mentor, but that's not going to be enough. So here Caleb is going to go outcast force of will, and I think we're going to see a pitch force of will from Doyle, and probably maybe a concession from Caleb at this point. I do agree with forcing here. However, I wonder, is there any merit to just sitting on the Force of Will? Because I think the only thing that you lose to right now is Entreat the Angels. Uh, <laughs> looks like uh, Caleb's asking, is this a flashback league? What is going on? Um, the flashback leagues have looked pretty interesting. Honestly, I haven't followed Standard at all since 1998. So I was really excited when we had the flashback Mirage Tempest uh, Standard. I was watching quite a few streams. Randy Bueller, um, she was a pro player back then, particularly excited. Uh, here's a portent here from Caleb targeting himself. Sees Ponder, Fluster, Storm, Tundra. I think uh, it's not good, but you're probably priced into keeping just because you need to play the predict, get I some value it, out of it. 
Caleb is zero percent to win this game. He has no sweepers and no answers to Karanos, right? Uh, correct. But I think Entree can steal the game, especially Mac not having anything. So I okay. think you got to play to that. And I think uh, keeping on top means your predict gives you some uh, equity. Now he chooses to predict here. How awkward would it be if his draw the portent for the turn were uh, his own entreat? Um, looks so like he's gonna play. And brainstorm to get it back on top of the deck, I guess. Yeah. All right. So here's a ponder finds force will brainstorm. Caracas. I think this has to be a ship, despite how appealing the brainstorm might be. Yeah, you have to shuffle. Um, and now eight ponder effect in the deck. You you're not too sad about having to shuffle because you have cards that see four new cards. So. That's basically like Sensei Stop would have seen six, but it's not too much different. And here we see right. Drop Portent, which rewards him for shuffling. All right. Do you start swordsing away these uh, soldier tokens? Because right now, by themselves, they are a four turn clock. Every single. Um, you have to make the map. With, with the factories, it's probably not worth it because every plow is basically negating a virtual 2 2 right now. Yeah. Well, Max not pulling trigger on them, so I wonder what his options are here. Well, he just has to wait for the turn where it's lethal for him, and you just attack with everything. Oh, and then... here we have it. Entreat the angels off the top. Okay. Uh, this I, would be for four. Still, still not going to be enough. We'll see. First, uh, there's a lot of chance that Mac can brainstorm into a, a counter spell. And even yeah. then, with the plow and... But this has to be step one. Yeah. What it's going on? Justice replies. Mac Doyle. Brainstorm here from um, Doyle finds Pyroblast two Ooh, lands. That's garbage. Now, that is garbage. He could set this up to decide what to reveal to Karanos on his draw step. Looks like it's going to be two lands. Would you rather have a lightning bolt than a land? Um, you 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 have to plow one of the angels, so you put him back up to twelve. So I think the burn him out with Karanos plan is not working at this point. True. And so I think your plan basically becomes trying to find more one-for-one -one removals like Snapcasters and things like that. So yeah. I think you have to go for the draw. But you well, know he's going to draw two blanks in a row. So yeah, this break counterpoint. Yeah, he good. has to draw two blanks rather than a lightning bolt, shuffle away uh, one of the lands. So I think it's a close call. Uh, I'm glad I'm not in this position where I have to make the decision on myself. Wow, myself. this is amazing. Caleb is just going to steal this game out of nowhere. After I said, after I said, like I was very silly to say that it was zero percent. No, that's something you should never do. I, in one CFB video, I saw Jacob Wilson saying, which is something you never see the pros recording videos do. Like, there's no way I'm losing this game, and of course, the karmic justice was there, and he actually lost his game from a unlo losable position. I had so. the pleasure of doing commentary at Card Kingdom, and uh, I was behind the mic on one of the most epic top deck sequences involved. There was a huge stack battle i think involved like 10 spells with six luster storms for from the ashes next turn those snapcaster from the ashes miracles player was still very down on board and then he naturally ripped terminus off the top after his opponent bottomed a terminus with his own jace uh it was i think the most unlikely sequence ever so that entreat off the top did not even phase me at all it was just like that was your out and you had to play to it but yeah we saw caleb be very disciplined and shuffle to ponder because which looked attractive because there was a brainstorm, but he went for to dig deeper in his library and he got rewarded. Yeah, too. Oh, now this portent's gonna go at Doyle, and he finds two snapcasters and a cutting wish. All three of those cards are pretty good. I would shuffle this, yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's just gonna attack, put him down to four. I guess none of these cards really win the game, but cutting wish is definitely frightening. You don't know what's in the sideboard, so I would bottom the cutting wish. Correct. I mean, I would put it on the third position, but I'm not even sure you want to shuffle. That's an interesting call, since you don't have the deck list. So I guess Caleb is looking at the graveyards right now, and he's just made, it just made him shuffle. Are you surprised that Doyle didn't use that Pyro Blast? You're up behind on board at this point. Um, on the portent? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think it's a great choice, but on the other hand, um, you're not winning if you just stand back with the Pyro Blast waiting for another blue card to pop up. Well, I think his, his outs are pretty slim, and he's probably looking for like one or two cards that's him getting mad of this. So he wants to have protection for it if he can find it. But I don't even know what that card is, because he has Cozy Likes Return as a sweeper, but that, that's not enough. And I think he's just going to be dead. Wow. wow. Caleb Durward finishing this one out of nowhere, as we've seen so many times from Miracles in the last five years. So but hey, that deck's not dead yet. 
the sequence is incredible because he ripped the fluster storm to one for one the fact of fiction like if the fact had been main phased uh though it would have been so up on cards that it would never have lost and then he beats through a decree of justice and a Karanos with his blue white control deck that's a huge testimony to the power of entreat yeah um, well wow. so um it's like Doyle's considering his outs. He has seven damage on board, but that's not enough to punch through some angels. Uh, Crucible dead. of Worlds, does that... I mean, there's nothing... He has no card selection, card draw, so basically he has to work with what he has in hand right now, all the lands in the graveyard, and none of them do anything to affect the board. Yeah. Yes. Caleb Durward's going to take this 3-0. That's going to punch him his ticket against, um, against Jarvis. Looks like... Um, yeah, so Caleb here indicating that he should have put back a spell rather than uh, putting two lands back. Uh, he congratulates Sturward on the victory Caleb. and tells him to stop playing in this league. Caleb had two sorts of plowshares in hand, so he wouldn't have been lethal because he could have just plowed one of his angels or one of the factories. Yeah, he didn't know that, but yeah, yeah uh, I, I guess think Caleb had him covered good. after ripping that swords. The brainstorm, however, being very poor for... Um, or Mac uh, spelled his doom. Yeah. It would have actually been better off letting the Entreat resolve and just digging deeper with the Brainstorm. You don't know that. You have to Brainstorm in response trying to find a counter spell, but that was a very, very mediocre one. But I guess that's what you get with the Landsteel deck. You have these more powerful effects, like 5-drop, 4-drop enchantment, Crucible, but you have less selection. Your deck is less smooth, and so you basically rely more on drawing than naturally, because the Standsteel deck does not even play Ponder, right? Uh, the stance of deck, I do not think it played any ponder. Yeah, so um, in the course of a long game, this is going to show you have the most powerful card, which we saw take over game two, and I think game one and three, we just saw how a Miracle's deck is just maybe weaker, but more consistent. Yeah. Alright, so right now, um, this looks like Jarvis and uh, Caleb in the finals. Are we doing that today, or are we waiting for, like, next week? Whoops. All right. Hey, chat, please let us know if you hear us. Oh, sorry, Mike, did you have something to say? Okay. So it's the end of uh, this week. Goodbye. I was very excited to do coverage for the first time, and even though it's 4 a.m. here, I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like uh, our poll pollsters did get this right. Jarvis, you predicted to advance over uh, the formidable Michael Bondé. And uh, Caleb Durward takes it over Mac Doyle. Um, just, uh, Sorry, thanks to everyone for tuning in here. Um, and thank you very much for uh, to Card Hoarder, Matt Pavlik, uh, and the other sponsors for uh, making this possible. Hope to see you guys here next week for Jarvis versus Caleb. See you guys. Take care. Thank you once again to uh, Card Hoarder, uh, Living Cards MTG, and Matt Pavlik. And we will see everyone next week for the finals. Caleb Durward versus Jarvis U. Thanks for tuning in.